Hello and welcome to coverage of the Manager Zone Under 21 2020 World Cup. I am your host, De Grigster, and we're just going to try and fly through these. Uh, we're going to fly through a couple of the groups and then we're going to focus on a couple of games. The first group we're going to look at is Group 2, just to recap the results. Uh, we have Spain and Portugal. Spain winning the clash of the two favourites to go through to the knockout stages. Quite convincingly, 6-1. And we also had Peru beat Switzerland 3-2 in the battle of the underdogs, putting Peru in a decent position to perhaps cause an upset and go through instead of Portugal, given Portugal's horrendous goal difference now. Uh, Switzerland will be fighting an uphill battle there to progress. We're going to look at Group 4 next. In Group 4, we have Norway upsetting Greece 1-0. And Mexico defeating the US in the North American rivalry game that went on there. So with Greece losing, that really opens up the... Uh, possibility of progression to all the other teams. This group's a relatively even group, so it's pretty hard to call at this stage. We're going to look at group five. Uh, group five, again, another pretty evenly even group in terms of the draw. We've got uh, Lithuania upsetting Colombia. Lithuania, I think, are the second lowest ranked team to make it to the manager zone under 21 2020 World Cup. So they pulled off a little bit of an upset there and we also have Estonia beating Ecuador with a solid 2-1 victory. And final group we're going to look at before we do some match highlights and things like that. Uh, we've got Sweden defeating Italy 5-1. So Sweden and Italy, again, similar to the Portugal-Spain group. Uh, Sweden and Italy, red-hot favourites to progress from this group. Uh, the Italians actually suffered a red card in this game, hence the lopsided scoreline towards Sweden. And then in the other game, we had Denmark well and truly beating Ireland. And what that means is... Denmark could probably afford a draw against Italy. And given this goal differential, uh, Denmark would be in a really strong position to progress, given that Italy lost by so much. However, to do that, of course, Denmark will need to actually draw, earn the tie against the Italians. In our first feature game, we have Finland versus Belgium. Uh, we're just going to start with the formation. So Finland running a pretty standard defensive lineup of a 4-2 setup in the back line. And then running a short, a centralized short passing uh, strike force. We've got Belgium again, a pretty standard 4-2 uh, defensive setup here. And then they've gone for the wings and they're going to try and win the ball in midfield and get it to the winger rather than trying to score and push men up, if that makes sense. Anyway, we will get into the match highlights. Okay, so we have the first goal coming up. We have Kokonen uh, with an intercept, but that's intercepted in turn by Goblins. Goblins. Pass to the wing to Bastion. Bastion down the wing. Cross comes in. Smolders! 1-0 to Belgium. From the kickoff, we have the Finnish passing it around as per their short passing tactic. Lobbing it forward, not finding anyone there. The Belgians get it out to the wing, but that's stopped pretty quickly. We have Potkin gets past Gobelians. Potkin going for it. Passes off to Willman. Willman now. Shot saved by Jamison. It's deflected. Willman scores. It's 1 1. The finish are not finished yet. The Belgians clear. It's intercepted by Kusinen. Pass to Jamison in the middle. 
And once again, the Belgians trying to play it to the winger, but being stopped there by Kusinen. Kusinen now pass in for Niemi Vita. Niemi Vita puts Moxa through. Moxa with the shot, it's in. The underdogs lead 2 1 against the Belgians. Will Finland be able to slay the Giants? Once again, straight from the kickoff, the Belgians, will they respond straight away? Getting the ball forward and backwards, just passing it around. Here's Van Dam. Van Dam with a short pass to Kupens. Kupens gets it to the winger. Here goes Bastian down the left wing. Kokonen corrals him. Bastian gets his cross in. Smolders! It's 2-2. Two -two. A very eventful first half here. The... Belgians went out first, the Finnish replying, going up ahead, and now Belgium responding 2-2. Smolders now with the ball in attack, tackled from behind. Kupens, Lentil, Smolders, no, saved by Lepanen. At halftime, the score remained 2-2. And we're just going to show you... Uh, the team's running back out onto the field. So, so far, the Belgians were, have been slightly on top of the finish. But the finish, obviously, have the ability to score. So, are uh, quite dangerous. This game could really go either way. With the Belgians making a substitution. Substituting the right wing back. Which probably won't do much against a short passing tactic. We pick up the game again with Bastion flying down the left wing. Cross coming in. Smolders, no, he's tackled and the ball is cleared by the finish. Lenti, ball inside. Kilpins, ball to the winger, tackled by Kusinen, who's having a really good game for the finish, but he turns it over there. Here's Kilpins, finding, putting through Smolders, 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 Smolders! Belgium go up 3-2. The Belgians then subbing on a fresh winger after the goal, which you can see happening on screen here, to try and tilt the balance of the game further in their favour. We pick up the game again with Lenti, playing a free ball for Smulders. Smulders takes a very terrible shot, and in fact Smulders is taken off for having such a terrible, completely, totally deplorable Shots on goal there. Totally justified for taking him off. With the final Belgian substitute. We pick up the play again. Belgium again playing it to the wing. But again thwarted by the finish. Here goes Potkin. Potkin, he's through on goal. De Grail comes back. De Grail makes a tackle. It's a red card. It's a red card. I don't know if he made it into the box or not. Did Potkin make it into the box? What does the referee say? Yes. The referee has given a penalty. The players come around. It looks like Yamsa to take. And that red card. The finish. They scored two goals against an 11-man Belgium. Yamsa. Well, usually this is in favour of the striker. It's saved by Jamison. Belgium still have a shot in the game. The 10-man Belgium lead 3-2. Finland still yet to make any substitutes as well though. This could really go either way, but the finish you would have to say against the 10-man Belgium would have to be feeling pretty good about their chances of causing the upset. Another finish attack thwarted. Here goes Wintermans down the left wing. Wintermans corralled by Hutum then. Wintermans will get the cross in. Wintermans to Anthonis. Anthonis a long shot. It's in! The ball is fumbled by the finish keeper and Anthonis scores. It's 4-2 to Belgium. And that is a real blow to the finish. They make a substitute, sub subbing on a new striker. The finish now, 15 minutes to go, and they need to score at least two goals to get something out of this game. Moxie through. Moxie... Tracked by Goblins. Goblins makes a great tackle there. Goal saving tackle. Winterman tackled by Kusinen. Kusinen going for a run. The finish really desperate now. Kusinen's ball was not good enough and his man was tackled. 
Here goes Wintermans. Wintermans avoids the first tackle. Cuts inside. Avoids the second tackle. Wintermans. Cross comes in. Anthonis. Same, same shot. Same location. Same result. Anthonis scores and puts it out of reach. The Belgians will win 5-2. Well, they might not win 5-2. But uh, that's actually the final result. I've got a little ahead of myself there. So in Group 8, we had the 10-man Belgium in the end triumphing 5-2 over the finish. Finland will feel like they missed a real opportunity to steal some points there. Uh, in the other Group 8 game, we have Poland defeating Chile 4-0. I would call this the toughest group as well, by the way. We've got Belgium, Chile, and Poland. They're all quite highly ranked in the manager's own rankings. Uh, so at this point, I would expect, I mean, Poland's in a really strong position, having already defeated the Chileans, who in turn, Chile's really had a tough, in the qualifiers, they were drawn a group with Argentina and England. So they've had a really hard time of it. Uh, but they're still in it. They could still need, well, probably two wins now, but they've lost 4-0. Belgium as well also will be feeling pretty good about their chances with some healthy goal difference. But it remains to be seen how competitive the Finns will be the clear underdog in this group uh, against both Chile and Poland. The next game for us to cover will be the Netherlands and Turkey in Group 6. We can see the Netherlands setting up with five defenders, so set up to play against a wing tactic. Uh, they've got three central midfielders and then two strikers, one offset. So they're very much going to be playing short passing with that strategy. Turkey, meanwhile, again set up with five at the back. Uh, so Turkey is expecting the Netherlands to play wings, but the Netherlands are not playing wings. They're going for short passing, so straight down the middle. Uh, Turkey also playing, Turkey itself playing wings, so that should play into the Netherlands' hands. It feels a little bit like the Netherlands made the right tactical pick. Predicting that the Turkish will go for a wing strategy. And that five at the back, which is slightly weaker against short passing, but not a whole lot. We pick up the game with the Netherlands winning the ball in midfield. Alberts putting through Benink. Benink corralled by Yalaza. Oh, Scholter! Scholter with the ball in the wing! Ta good tackle from the Turkish defender there. Turkey clears the ball out to the wing. Here goes Veli Rasiv, avoids the first tackle. Weird comes over to Corral. Veli Rasiv gets his cross and come on! Saved by Henselmans. Henselmans, the Dutch keeper. Boots it straight to the Turkish midfield. Nesip putting through Kammer. Kammer, long range try. It's touched, but it's through for a goal! And Turkey goes up 1 0 as I begin to lose my voice and I've still got a whole bunch of games to go. The Dutch playing it back into the back line from the kickoff. Here's Hoff. Hohenstein putting Scholter through. Scholter punishing the high Turkish line. Scholter all the way into the box. Scholter, Scholter dribbles the keeper and scores. The Dutch respond immediately and tie the game up at 1-1. After a rather dull opening, plenty of action around the 30th minute mark. Two goals and it's 1-1. We will pick the game up in the second half. Ugla intercepting a goal kick, going for Hohenstein. Hohenstein back for Schierhorn. Schierhorn now trying to pass forward, does not find his man. Oh, we have a yellow card, Scholter trying to tackle Corson Kansal. And picks up a yellow for that dangerous tackle from behind. Will that prove significant later on? We'll have to wait and see. We have the Dutch with the ball in midfield just a few minutes later. Through ball for Benink. Benink through. Oh, can't put Scholter. Scholter, the preferred strike. Oh, he does find Scholter. Scholter with the shot. Scholter scores. 2-1.
to the Netherlands. I'm definitely not used to talking this much. We have a bunch of substitutes as well with that goal. The Turkish full substituting the basically. Oh, they're going to short passing. Turkey goes to short passing. They're down to one. A fully new attack force for them. We will see how it plays out. We have just a few minutes later the Dutch substituting players. We'll just see where they line up. Looks like the Dutch are going to go short passing for the whole game. Uh, the Dutch repelling another attack. Here's Weird in midfield going for Timmermans. Will he get it? Yes, he does. Timmermans now passing forward for Schulte. Schulte, Schulte breaks through. Breaks past Corson Cancel. Passes off to Pillage. Pillage with his first touch of the ball. He was just subbed on. He was just subbed on. Brilliant move from the manager there. The Netherlands go up 3-1. And that is a pretty good lead with just 20, about 20 minutes to go in game time. We're going to pick the game up for the last seven minutes here. Here's Nazil. Nazil for Kor Jurek. Koryurak through and that shot saved by Hanselmans. The Turkish will be hoping for a goal soon. Here is Hulk, that's actually a pretty good name, uh, to the guy whose characters don't appear in the game. Uh, Here goes Koryurak again. Koryurak! No! The Turkish going all out attack. Here's another intercept. Here's the guy with the squares in his name. Kayan trying to put his teammate through, but intercept by Uglan. Veli Yakrasiv with an intercept. Core UX through again. Core UX surely this time. This time he scores in the 87th minute. There's still a little bit of time. Can the Turkish pull back another goal or will the Netherlands be victorious? The Dutch Passing forward, here's Gurdjian though for the Turkish, intercepted by Weird, Weird for the Dutch, to Pillage, he's tackled by Dyke. Ball ends up with Timmermans in the middle of the field for the Dutch though, Mayo, Mayo dribbling forward, here's Pillage, the sub, he was the hero, he scored the third goal, his shot is saved by Husnu Pala. The Turkish have to go direct now, we're in ongoing time, but De Jong with the intercept, Veli Rasiv in turn, and that's it! That's the game! I really wish this didn't show up. So here's the game summary. You can see that Schulte with a double and then the substitute Pillage for the Netherlands scoring Kama and Koryurek. The Turkish substitute scoring, so the subs had a bit of an impact uh, as we go to the second screen. You can see that Turkey really dominated, especially in that last portion of the game, with 15 shots on target to the Netherlands 9. But in manager zone, sometimes upsets happen, and this was one of those occasions. Uh, you can see the Netherlands actually dominated possession. That normally happens when you go short passing against a wing strategy. So there's not too much, I would say, to read into that there. It's more meaningful when it's short passing against short passing or wings against wings, the possession stats. We look at the other game from the group as well. That was Indonesia losing to Venezuela 2-0. Uh, Turkey will still probably feel pretty good about their chances of progressing the Netherlands will be feeling uh, really super confident now, I would say. They've defeated their toughest group opponent, at least by manager's own ranking. So that puts the Netherlands in a very strong position to progress. Not the end of the world for Turkey, though. They've still got two games that they will be favourites going into. Our next feature game is going to be Argentina against Uruguay. Uh, Argentina going for five at the back with two defensive midfielders. We've got the double wing formation. 
with just the one target man. So very much giving Uruguay the center of the field should they want it. But the Argentinian should be quite effective at going down that wing. Uruguay, on the other hand, taking the center of the field with their short passing tactic. Uh, so five defenders and two defensive midfielders again. But the three attacking players lining up in a short passing formation. So the Uruguayans... I would say that's advantage Uruguay, tactically speaking. Although Argentina wing play is generally favoured, considered the more uh, advantageous strategy in the manager's own meta. But if you're ever going to play short passing, I think this is the kind of situation where you would want to go. Anyway, we'll get to the game. We pick the game up in the 14th minute. The Argentinians getting it to the wing. Here's Jericho. Jericho, hurrahed by Revilla. Uh, gets it inboard for Solos. Saradillo. Fernando Quintero is through on goal. Arich gets across. Randoli's through now. Randoli's shot is saved by Herrero. Uh, it's also quite hard to tell these teams apart. Here's Saradillo. Here's Fernando Quintero, he's through. Fernando Quintero, it's in! Uruguay go 1-0 up on the upset. We love a good underdog here at the this channel. And Fernando Quintero putting Uruguay up really makes me lose my voice even more than I already have. So we're going to pick up the game from the kickoff, essentially. The Argentinians with the ball. Here is Yanaro. Yanaro to Rufo. Rufo is tackled by Pacon. Uh, the Argentinians wing, put, get the ball back on the wing. Here is Valdivieso. And that's a situation where the double winger is supposed to work. You've got the short pass from one winger to the other, but it was intercepted by the defender. Uh, Bedia now with the ball, the wing back for Uruguay that will expose them as he goes on a run and turns it over. Here's Yeriko, Yeriko in board for Rufo. Rufo now, Rufo, he's not through on goal. He had three defenders nearby, passed backwards, intercepted. Here's Yeriko on the wing for Argentina now. The Argentinians go forward. Yeriko's ball in for Rufo. He's tackled in the box though. The Uruguayans managed to clear. A poor defensive header allows Fernando Quintero to intercept the ball. He gets it to Randoli. Randoli with a shot. Randoli! And Uruguay is up 2-0. The upset is on the cards, my friends. Argentina with an attack soon after the kickoff. The ball is cleared by the Uruguayans. Here's Randoli doing some defensive work. One of the goal scorers, Randoli, and board hoping for... Saradello, but it is intercepted. Here's Rufo. Rufo now. He's almost through. Rufo Pacon with a tackle. That's a yellow card. Revilla nearby, perhaps preventing that from being a red. Somewhat controversial, though. Rufo arguing that he was through on goal and that should have been a straight red. Uh, but the Uruguayans and the referee deciding that the second defender was near enough that it wasn't didn't warrant a straight red for being thrown on goal and being tackled, fouled from behind. Uruguay remains 2-0 up as the game continues because this game just continues and I'm, I don't like having control of the thing because it shows up and it's kind of ugly. Argentina with the ball in midfield. The ball is to the wing, but Bedia doing well on that Uruguayan left-back position, although he turns it over. I think it's kind of hard to tell. Again, uniforms off. Here is Valdivieso. Valdivieso down the right wing. Valdivieso gets his cross in. Here's Rufo. Rufo's header. It's in. Uruguay get one. I mean, Argentina get one back. Poor commentary there. We should sack the commentator for that. That was appalling. Totally ruined the moment. Argentina and Russo. I think he was the second top scorer in qualifying. As you would expect a strong team like Argentina to be. Here's Yoko Yanaro trying to find someone. But again, the game sort of devolving into a def very defensive battle. 
in the first half, despite the fact three goals are scored. We are going to pick the game up in the 58th minute. Here's Solis in midfield for the Uruguayans. Passing to Saradello. Saradello past the defender. Saradello shot deflected. And Oreo making, getting back with the save. Now the Argentinians counter. Ball out to the wing. Here's Jericho. Jericho with the ball. Cross comes in for Rufo. Rufo controls it. Avoids the tackle. His shot is saved by Montesinos. Montesinos with the pass to Saradello. Saradello finds Randoli. Randoli, the Argentinian defense scrambling. Fernando Quintero is through. Fernando Quintero is tackled at the last minute. Saradello with an intercept in midfield. I'm not sure who scored that, but it was Saradello's pass into the box. It was either Fernando Quintero or Randoli. And we've got substitutions as well. Uruguay up 3-1. Argentina will be scrambling now. And it looks like the Uruguayans are going to a double wing strategy. Basically the same as what the Argentinians are playing. Argentina not making any substitutes there. So we've got the same strategy on each team being played. It will come down to which team... Well, it technically... Oh, here's Sharp, actually. He's the new striker for Argentina. Whose substitutes will have the biggest impact? And we've got two more subs. Argentina's final two substitutions. No, Uruguay. I forgot which way everyone's... No, no, wait. Yeah, no, I've forgotten which way. Okay, wait. So, Argentina subbed its... Uh... This game is going too fast. Argentina subbed its two wingers and its central striker. Here's Valerio, the, one of the new wingers. Gets it in for Sharp. It's off the crossbar. Yeah, okay, scrap that. So uh, Uruguay is still playing short passing. Ignore everything I just said. I'm not going to edit this because this, uh, I'm lazy. Yet I'm making a video. That's probably not a good combination. So, ball out to the wing. Here's Valerio. Valerio's cross comes in. Sharp, it's tackled and the ball is cleared to Saradello. Argentina wins it back in midfield. Here's Cordero. Cordero with the ball goes to the wing. Valero, the Uruguayan defense totally scrambling here. Valero's cross. Sharp, sharp the sharpshooter. It's Argentina back in the game, scoring their second goal. 3 2 still to Uruguay though. The final five minutes of play here. The Argentinians. Constantly attacking. Will the Uruguayans hold out? Here's Villazan. Pass forward for Martel, one of the subs. Martel for Mel Dagas. Uh, something. Badia with the ball now. Badia through ball. No, it's intercepted. The Argentinians on the attack. Here goes Sharp. Sharp trying to get it to one of the wingers. One of the wingers does get it. It's Cordero. Cordero. Cordero shot is saved by Montesinos. Montesinos now holding the ball up. Passes for Badia. Badia's pass is intercepted. Here goes Cordero. He's got the ball back on the wing. Cordero's pass for Sharp. Sharp does win it. He's got three defenders around, so passes backwards. The Argentinians are messing around a little bit. And here's Valera for Uruguay. Getting the ball and just running it forward. Argentina again. Pretty dominant in midfield here in the closing stages. Here's Oriche. Oriche with the ball passing for Cordero. Cordero now doesn't utilize his winger, passes backwards for Sanit Kurtz, and the ball is intercepted again. And that is the end of the game. So, just to recap Uruguay causing the upset against Argentina with a five at the back short passing strategy. That came out on top against Argentina's double winger, all-in wings uh, tactic. We can see the shots, it was actually pretty even. The Uruguayans actually ended up with more shots on target, but the Argentinians had more shots, so that's sort of neither here or there. You can see Argentina actually had a lot more passes. As we go to the possession stats, so... Normally, short passing, like I said previously, you would expect the possession to be in Uruguay's favor. 
here it's pretty much 50 50 so that tells you that the argentinian defenders uh did a lot of high quality defending and won the ball back rather quickly I say that because a short passing a short passing attack takes more time off the clock uh, than a wing strategy because a wing strategy you're basically passing it to the winger and the winger just dribbles down that side of the field. Uh, so wing strategies speed the game up, whereas short passing strategies slow the game down. So Argentina, um, I mean you're you know I guess you had more shots. A draw probably would have been more fair, but this is managed zone. And obviously, if the sim was always going to say, oh, it's an even game, it's a draw, that would be kind of boring. So Uruguay coming away with the upset win 3-2. And as we look at the group, the other game was China defeating Hungary 2-0. Hungary not expected to... Uh, Hungary, the big underdogs in the group, really not expected to do too much damage, but you never know. Uh, Uruguay obviously winning. They're still going to have a tough uh, game against China, so Argentina wouldn't count themselves out yet. Uh, China would obviously go in as favourites against Uruguay, but China-Argentina will be probably a 50-50 game, which is the one that's coming up next. That will tell us a lot about whether Uruguay, despite winning against Argentina, whether or not well, actually, I mean, if Argentina loses the game against Uruguay, they're going to be in a real spot of bother. Which is what happens when you lose the first game. So, that Argentina-China game, I will hopefully cover, actually. That, that, that looks really juicy now that there are quite high stakes, particularly for Argentina, in that group game. Moving on to the final game we'll be covering, and hopefully one where I will try not to be too biased, because I am, of course, the national coach of Australia, so this is my strategy. I will go through Brazil first, so they've set up with a standard 4-2 uh, defense. They're also going short passing, which is not what the Australians had scouted out here. You've got a very paradoxical strategy here. We've got five at the back, so you'd say it's defensive, but the line is really, really high. So uh, it's rather aggressively trying to win the ball back, I guess we will say. The, against short passing, though, it probably won't be too effective. The two Brazilian attackers are going to be slotting nicely in the gaps of the defense. So, needless to say, this is not what we scouted Brazil as probably going to play. Australia going short passing in attack. Uh, Brazil's 4-2 defense. The good thing about the defense is that it's not weak to any particular strategy, which is why it's the most played uh, formation defense-wise. Defense Anyway, let's uh, get into things. We're actually going to cover straight from the kickoff. So the Brazilians with the kickoff going back for Chiellini, Braga, Xavier, intercepted by Holden. Holden now for the Australians, tries to pass forward, find Buffy, does not Chiellini with the intercept. Here's Crisol, he's tackled. Here's Allen, the central defender for Australia, going for a bit of a run. Pukalis is through here. Pukalis, no. Kikuchi with the save. The attacking midfielder, Pukalis, there, going for a bit of a run. Allen, tackled from behind by Crisol. Crisol now. The defense is scrambling already. Here's De Godoy. De Godoy chased down by Lucas. No. And he scores. The Brazilians, the favorites, go up 1 0 already. Ominous signs for the Australians here. In the third minute, the earliest goal in any of the games going to Brazil. We will pick the game back up in the 10th minute. Holden trying to find Pocalis. Intercepted by Chiellini. Chiellini now for De Godoy. De Godoy, he's through past Lucas. Lucas, can he make the tackle? Lucas, no he can't. De Godoy. For the Brazilians. Looking to make it 2-0. Here's Simpson. He's tackled. Uh, Xavier in turn is tackled by Cole, so the Australians win it back. Here's De, De Amaral off the intercept, tackled from behind by Holden. Holden now. 
He's tackled by Braga. Braga for Brazil. Degadoy. Degadoy is through. Degadoy chased down by Allen. Degadoy chased down by Simpson. Avoids the tackle. Degadoy. It's a, it's deflected. And Andrews gets back to clear the ball for the Australians. Brazil well and truly on top. Here's Xavier. Xavier for Degadoy. And that ball has gone wide of the goals. Brazil well and truly on top early. Allen winning the ball back for the Australians in midfield. We've jumped to about the 40th minute. Here's Cialini winning it back. Allen winning it back. Not, it's pretty messy here. Holden, the pass went to Holden and Nathan picking up a yellow card. Here's Cole with the free kick. Cole with the shots. It's saved by Kikuchi. Will that yellow be important later? Picking up in the second half, 50th minute. Here's Cialini. His pass. Intercept by Faizy. Faizy putting Pukalas through. Pukalas for Holden. Tackled at the last minute, though. The Australians not getting the attack in. Here's Dumond. Really end-to-end -end stuff. Dumond is tackled by Andrews. Andrews for Holden. Holden now with the ball. Holden tackle from behind. It's Nathan. It's a second yellow card. Brazil down to 10 men. Australia, can they get an upset? So Brazil, the substitution I assume is to bring a defender on instead of the striker. Here is Cole with the Australian free kick going forward. Intercept by Cialini. Holden, Boothy shot is saved by Kikuchi and Cialini. The Australians already on the attack after that red card to the Brazilians. Will that swing the game? Brazil have been well on top. Here's Cole, actually. Cole trying to get past Cialini, but does not. Sixty second minute. Dumont trying to find Crisol here. Finds De Amaral instead. He back passes for Xavier. Xavier goes forward for Crisol. Intercept by Allen. Allen now for Pocalis. Pocalis straight up the middle. Pocalis avoids Cialini. Pocalis! Pocalis! From halfway! Dribbles into the box. Solo man scores. It's 1 1. The Australians are back in it. And they both sides make their substitutions now at this critical juncture. The Australians switch to a wing strategy, as does Brazil. Both teams going wings for this final about 25 minutes we have left of the game. We are just a few minutes later. Lucas with an intercept. Lucas making the play. Lucas going forward. Passes to Holden. Holden's through here. Holden! The Australians score two goals within five minutes and take a 2-1 lead. The upset is on. Well, Brazil, they've been looking very dangerous still, despite going down to 10 men. The Australians, though, you just feel like they're running out the game a little bit better. 2-1 to the Australians. Ball play to the Brazilian win. Second, 72nd minute now. Here's Picarlos winning the ball for Australia. Picarlos going for a run, trying to find Holden. His ball is intercepted by Oliveira. Oliveira for Dumont. Dumont threw on goal, but he doesn't have enough energy. Burmeister getting back an Australian substitute in defense. The ball goes wide to Cataniese. Cataniese. Holding the ball, doesn't like his potential cross, goes back for Xavier. Xavier is tackled by Allen and Millmaker. Millmaker for Australia. Millmaker goes wide for Simpson. Simpson now, the wing back making the play. The wing back and his ball was intercepted. Hold down for Millmaker. Cialini missed tackle. Millmaker shot! Millmaker! Jackson, six foot sub. Millmaker. Scores a third goal for Australia. Will that be it? The ball goes back. The Brazilians really have to attack now. Here's Oliveira. Ball intercepted by Faizy. Milmaker in the vicinity. Doesn't win the ball there. Cataniese. Cata... Oh, that's really hard to pronounce as an Australian. Dumond with the ball. He's tackled by Allen. Ball headed into the middle of the pitch. Here's Faizy to Holden. Holden now with the ball. Going wide, doesn't find Hole. Hole. Asa Hole going down the wing. 
Cross comes in. Oliveira with the intercept. Oliveira goes forward with for Dumond. Dumond, he's looking very tired, is tackled. Quadros with an intercept. De Amaral. Here's Catanarieze. Hall gives away the free kick. Brazil. Dying moments. This ball's going to the winger who's slowly jogging, which is how you can always tell that it's going to that player. Catanieze. Catanieze. Cross comes in for Dumond. Dumond misses. The top goal scorer from the qualifiers, Dumond, with a chance actually to break into the top 20 for the all time under 21 goal scorers as well. Kyle's goal kick, Cerezo, Catarnese, Catarines, uh, he's going down the wing. It's stoppage time now. Ball in for Dumond. Dumond scores! It's 3 2. Brazil will be looking to restart the play as quickly as possible. Is it too little too late? Pakalas back for Faisy. Faisy, and it is too little too late. The Australians get the upset with a little bit of fortune with the red card. As you can see, the shots in the end ending up are uh, equal. We'll go through the goals first. So De Godoy scoring in the third minute. It looked like the Brazilians were on for a massive victory. The red card changed the game, though. The Australians with three goals in 17 minutes. Pakalas, Holden, and Millmaker. Pakalas scoring under the short play strategy. Holden and Millmaker's goals are under... Actually, no, wait. Uh, I don't remember if Holden's goal. I don't, I don't even remember Holden's goal. It's been that crazy of a game. Millmaker's goal was a real gem. I'm real happy with that substitute, if I don't say so myself. Uh, the shots, so both teams with 14 shots. Uh, Australia, all of our shots on target. Brazil, just 11 out of 14, which is still pretty good. And finally, we'll go to the final page. So Brazil, as you can see, dominated possession. As you'd expect, we played wing play all game long. We actually had three fouls. And did not pick up any cards from the three fouls that we committed. Whereas the Brazilians with Nathan picking up two yellows. You'd have to say the Brazilians were pretty unlucky. But hey, as an Australian, you know, I mean, didn't, yeah, I mean, the refs, like, just interested in this video series continuing, I guess, past the group stages. I don't know. I'm not the best commentator, I guess. But we'll go back. We'll look at the group. This is group one, which has two clear favorites in Brazil and Romania. Obviously, Brazil getting upset. Romania with a solid win against Bulgaria. So Brazil, despite losing, uh, it's only a one goal loss. They would still feel, I mean, with a team like Australia, they're going to be underdogs in every game. So it's not going to be passed. It kind of opens up a little bit for Bulgaria as well. Despite losing to Romania. If Romania wins all of their games, um, then Bulgaria might be feeling a little better about their chances. <clears throat> Obviously, Australia are in a relatively strong position. And Australia will hope that they can defeat Bulgaria. And if then Romania defeats Brazil, that would mean Australia would be through. Romania and Australia would both have two wins in that scenario. That would be the dream scenario for the Australians. So let's hope that happens. No bias, of course, as the national coach of the Australian team. No bias whatsoever for, you know, reasons. Anyway, that concludes our roundup of the first round of group games as the tournament progresses to the knockout stages we will be able to do more intense analysis you can see Miroslav Closer who is Spanish in this universe has four goals leading the way plays for a Brazilian team Zaram Academy and then we've got two other players who scored hat tricks Blomquist and Smulders Anyway, we look forward to the next round of play and hopefully we will I will see you watching this the next version then. 
I am, hopefully I get better at talking at, I mean, I guess it's 11 a.m. now, but I actually got up. I, I, I'm coming, I'm off about four or five hours of sleep here, trying to get this out as quickly as possible.